Now let me actually demonstrate to you how you can get to the reclass button in the binder, how you actually do the reclass, and then how do you post it, and then how do you get back all that information updated into your lead sheet. So here is the rendition of the actual program, the SP binder, as we call it, uh, which is on the left side here. Here is my document viewer. And again, there are different components of this uh, where you can also do a lot of annotations like you do in PDF today. There are different other functions in the binder that are very unique to the program here, uh, one of them being cross-reference. So on the first page of the K1, in the past, we used to pick up all these numbers, and th this was the only thing we used to do. We, we could never go back to the supplement pages. But now, since these numbers have some amounts on the supplement pages, we are able to cross-reference them so that a preparer can quickly see that, OK, the amount is not picked up from the first page. It's picked up from here because there is some additional information lying down there. So cross-references are placed on the first pages, and the preparers can easily go and identify what amounts have been picked up. On the right here, you will see the lead sheets. This is the lead sheet that creates a summary of what has been picked up by the Chopra program and how all that information looks today. So for one example here, the percept to life one K1, all the amounts that relate to 11i are sitting into one bucket, although you can see interest, dividend, long-term capital gains, and things like that. For another K1, Victoria Fund, there's additional stuff for 11i and all sitting into one bucket. Now, what we want to do is we want to see how the program is going to help you move all these numbers into the right buckets and then push it to the tax return. So how do we get to that K1 reclass tab? I don't see it here. Well, it's up here. You can get to by clicking on an icon here on the main toolbar, or you can go to Binder, click on K1 reclass, and that's going to quickly bring up the K1 reclass tab. We have three categories, partnership, S Corp and fiduciary. For any K1 that no uh, supplement data exists, you're going to easily simply say the class data is not available for this type. But for the ones that is available, it's going to be easily identifiable for the preparer in here. So let's go to one of these. So I'm going to start with my favorite here, Vittoria Fun. Has a lot of information sitting down in here. Let's see what all things as a preparer I can do to reclass and then push all that information in the tax term. So these are the descriptions as picked up by the OCR program and verified by somebody, and then the amounts that relate to those descriptions. What we want to do is have the ability to reclass all of those. The dividend income, non-qualified, I know that can go into foreign or a dividend. That is not, not qualified. That's the one I will select here. On the qualified dividend, I'll select the foreign qualified because, again, I'm going by the description. And then the next one I'll pick up is the 11A. Now, in this case, let's say for the IRS section 988, I'm going to reclass this to ordinary income one. But as a preparer, I know that I have to actually put this into a new activity. So last column in the reclass allows me to assign it to different activities. I can actually go ahead and create a new non-passive activity. So that option is also available. So instead of you having to create multiple excels or multiple activities in your tax return, you can just instruct that right here, and that's going to create that for you. Other portfolio income, I'll select 11A in there, and then I'll move down to the famous 11I. So over here, you'll see there are more than nine or 10 descriptions. What we have done is we will display at least 10 descriptions here. Hopefully, that should be enough. But if not, you will still have the ability to move to the next pages uh, in the same screen. So this one, obviously, we know is line, line eight. This one is line 9A, which is long term. So you will see how easy it is for a preparer to go in and quickly select the descriptions. Now you may be thinking that, well, Chopra created this great technology, but the preparer still has to do things manually, which is what you're seeing here. So we have already thought of that. What we are going to do is as people use it, as preparers and as a lot of firms use this functionality, we are going to machine learn how things are being categorized and reclassed. 
meaning we'll look at the descriptions and we'll look at how people are reclassing those two. So if you know that every time if it's a dividend income, it is being marked as line six. If we know that it's interest income, it's always being marked as line five, then the machine learning will know where exactly all that information needs to go. And that's how we're gonna categorize all of that information for you. So machine learning is coming. It's not yet in there in the binder. Um, so I wanted to make that very clear to everybody here. Not in the first phase or in the second phase this is gonna be happening, but we are gonna involve machine learning into the program so that things can start get read and identified and then we can start suggesting to you where things should be reclassed. So that way, your preparers are just reviewing what the program has done instead of having to go in and manually select all of these. So that's the next exciting phase that will come out on this uh, KMA reclass function. I'll just complete a few that I have left out here. Just want to show you the whole effect on the program and the lead sheet. And the other income goes into level I. Again, you will see all the appropriate places where the reclass can happen. We have tried to include all of those. So you shouldn't find any deficiencies in there. You should just be able to go in and quickly select the ones that you need. Again, for this one, as a preparer, I know that this relates to a new activity. I'll just go ahead and say, I need a new non-passive activity. Now, everybody, Please make sure that you, your eyes are on these references. Like I said, these are 11 eyes picked up by the program, but I just reclass all of them to different lines of the uh, K1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post my reclass into. So when I click on post reclass, what this does is quickly changes all these numbers and assigns them to different lines in the binder itself. And then you will see all of those 11 eyes will change into different lines. There you go. So now my amounts are going into line five, line six A, nine A, eleven I, and box one. And but now I go to my lead sheets, and because the lead sheets were already calculated, I'll go to the tools and recalculate. And now that's the lead sheets is going to show me the same thing, that all these reclass numbers are going into the appropriate lines. So line five will go into line five, and that's how the lead sheets will change. So you saw before that there were too many 11i items, now it's just few because all of them have been divided back into where they should have gone. So this is how that information is going to look like to you now. All lines going into the right spots. So remember, by using the OCR in the 1040 scan to capture the K1 supplemental page data, by using the K1 reclass feature in the SP binder, and performing export to tax software with two clicks, you can crush and trash the old ways of doing K1 reclass. 